You're getting ready to sell your house and you're starting to worry about all the mistakes you could potentially make. So we're gonna run through all the mistakes that we can think of after yes. doing this for 25 years and help you guys out so you don't make any of these common mistakes. Yeah, so when a lot of people go to sell their house, they maybe they hire a realtor, they think all the realtors are the same and it ends up being a disaster in some cases. So we're gonna unpack all those different situations and how you can avoid them and how you can really uh, be mindful of what you need to be mindful of to make the most amount of money or just make the process as easy as possible. So if you're looking to maximize the amount of money that you make, I can tell you the biggest mistake, so I'm gonna call it number one, even though this isn't a list of numbered things, is when people try to sell their house as is. Meaning they're not gonna do any repairs, they're just gonna put a sign out front and name their price and put it on the market. The point of that is, if you're trying to make the most amount of money, that is the biggest mistake because once people see your home and it is as is, they're just gonna discount you for everything that they think you should have done that you didn't do. Yeah, if you're trying to make the most amount of money, here's the thing is, if people are gonna come through the house and you have really loud paint color or you have stains in the carpet, little holes in the walls from hanging pictures and stuff like that, is it easy to fix? 100% it's easy to fix. And you would think that the person walking through the house and looking at it would realize that as well and not worry about it. But the thing is, is they sit there and they're just adding up dollar signs and they're starting to feel like I've got to do all this different work. And so what ends up happening is whatever the price, let's say they list the house and it's 550, they're starting to think, well, I'm gonna have to do X, Y, Z, and they start discounting the price. So they immediately think that that price is now 20,000, 30,000 less. I know this is the case because there's been times where I took over a listing for somebody else and there were light bulbs out or there were light bulbs that didn't even match the same color. It's just nuts because people will actually not feel like the house is turnkey at that point and it changes. The key word you just said is feel and you said it twice, you said it earlier. What people feel like when they walk in your house, especially the first time, is what they're willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So if they feel great about it, they'll feel great paying the full price. Yeah. If they feel off, dirty, gross, those yeah. are things that are gonna make them not wanna pay full. Change the light bulbs, do the touch up paint, fix the little screws, right? Clean the place. Like Clean really, the place. Really, really basic yes. things. If the yard has the grass really tall, you know, or the grass is growing onto the concrete, it's not edged, those sorts of things. The sum of all those parts is thousands of dollars. And the thing is, is a lot of these repairs, they're not even really repairs, they're just preparation. And we're talking maybe 10 hours worth of work. Right. In some cases, and so 10 hours worth of work, and you look at maybe the house getting 20,000 less on the price. Feelings are expensive. Exactly. Yes. So. I mean, I don't, what is that per hour, right? I mean, would you do that work? Yes. Yeah. All day. One huge mistake that I know a lot of people make, because I hear it all the time, is they use a realtor that they're not really confident with. And they do it for different reasons, but one of the common reasons that I've heard is out of obligation. So it's somebody that maybe you're friends with, or your cousin is friends with, or mm -hmm. I don't know, why else would you be obligated? used them before. Oh yeah, somebody you may have used in the past, but they didn't really do a great job. Or they helped you buy the place, but you right. don't know if they know how to market a property for sale. Yeah, or when they helped you buy the place, maybe they were a brand new agent three years ago and they've only had three years of experience now and never listed a lot of homes. So it's just obligation mm -hmm. creates a situation where you may not get the best experience or the best outcome. Yeah, yeah, like your hairdresser moonlights as a realtor and you sit in her chair, and so she's confided in you about how she's starting a new career, mm -hmm. and so you feel like, oh, all realtors are the same, and so that you end up saying, sure, I'm gonna put my house on the market soon. You know what, you should do it for me. Huge mistake. <laughs> it happens huge a lot. Huge mistake. So another huge mistake that I see people making is they, they assume that the sales process for listing the house is always the same, meaning you put a sign in the front yard, maybe it's got a flyer in the box, uh, you put the house on the MLS, uh, you take some pretty good pictures, right? And then you just hope for the best. Maybe you do an open house, but the reality is, is like the, the people that are getting the most amount of money, they, they go through a proven process that has way more elements than just that. Yeah, not having a unique marketing strategy for your specific property is a huge mistake. 
If you don't have somebody that's willing to take the time to really figure that out, figure out who their audience is and how to best target that audience, you're not gonna get the best results from that. Yeah, one of my favorite questions to ask a seller when I go to a consultation about selling is you've lived here for this X number of years, right? You lived here for seven years. What have you loved about living here so much and what are you gonna really miss when you move away? Because the buyer, the person who's gonna live there, they're gonna feel the same way about the place in the future. So why not paint that picture from the start so that you can grab that person out of the digital audience and have them know this is exactly why I should buy this place. One huge mistake I think everybody can probably guess is pricing the house wrong. Whether it be too high or too low, it doesn't actually matter. If you price it wrong, it's wrong. It throws off momentum. It throws off how many people are going to come look at the property and which people are going to come look at the property. And then your numbers are all thrown off too. So it's it's kind of pointless to not price your home correctly. So let's say the house is worth 600000 They'll be like, let's put it up on the market for five fifty, and kind of try to manufacture this like environment where it's a frenzy and maybe there's a bidding war. That I'd seen backfire too. Yeah, so then your offers under what you actually really want for the home, you were hoping for three offers, you only got one, and maybe two, and maybe they're both kind of similar, and maybe one of them's not in a great financial position. So then you're like stuck with these two offers that you didn't really expect to get. So it's disappointing. There's a ton that goes into it. There's a, if you're not really looking at the analytics very closely, and there's just way too many factors for a homeowner and I feel bad for the people who are trying to sell their house on their own as a for sale by owner because they are going off their gut and they're looking at the things around their house maybe a little bit but they don't have access to the MLS. They don't know every detail about why certain homes sold for under the price meaning like oh this house you know needed a new roof and so it's priced low on purpose. It's just that the lack of the analytics and the details to really have a plan. Yeah, and along with this, pricing it wrong is pricing it wrong by using Zillow or yeah. Redfin <laughs> oh. or whatever. I mean, yeah. that goes along with what you said about Fizbo. It's like for sale by owner people, they don't have all the same data mm -hmm. that we have. So you know what they usually do? What? They look at Redfin and then they look at Zillow. So if Redfin says the house is six twenty-five. And Zillow says the house is 575. Guess which one they're going to go with? 625. They're going to go with the high <laughs> number, right? And so, and the thing is, is those two algorithms are very imperfect. I mean, they have an advertised error rate. In most cases, in most areas, it's around 7%. So you have a $600,000 house, the error rate is around 7%. I mean, logic would dictate you could be $42,000 under or over. So, yeah, it's, it's really challenging for the consumer for sure. Huge mistake I see people make is not having good, accurate photos of your property. So good is a great part of that conversation, which is like, are you taking great photos? Are they professional photos? Do they come across clean and clear and the clutter's been eliminated from the house and they look nice? but also accurate because if they're inaccurate photos of the property, that actually makes people mad. Your pictures are what makes people decide whether or not they're going to bother going out to the house. Mm. So if your pictures are not even good enough to go through to the third one, mm -hmm. no one's driving there. Yeah, there's a complete strategy too. I see a lot of people will list the house too. <laughs> I see this a bunch of times. And they have the most amazing backyard, entertaining area, water feature, all this crazy stuff. Like this is the reason why somebody would buy this house. And guess where the photo is? At the end, At the where no one's ever gonna see it. <laughs> yeah, it's 20 <laughs> pictures deep. Yeah, that's really stupid. And so this happens a lot. And for some reason, realtors have this perception about, I need to show the front of the house and then the entry and then the front door and then whatever's next, whatever's next. None of that matters. It's attention span. How do you get somebody to see the best, most saleable asset of the property right away? Another huge mistake that you could make is not being a good negotiator. Whether you're selling your house on your own, if you haven't negotiated for real estate before, it's definitely not a skill that you're gonna have. And it's just something that takes time to acquire and practice and learn and know how to do. So going along with hiring the right realtor, which we talked about earlier, having somebody in your corner that knows how to negotiate is a huge 
deal. It can make or break thousands and thousands of dollars in your sale. Yeah, I mean, if, if I had my choice knowing what I know, I'd want somebody who knows how to market and knows how to negotiate. They'd be like 1A, 1B. Or they'd be interchangeable almost. Right, how many people can you get through the door and then how are you gonna manage those people that come through yeah, the door? Because those I, are the two things. We've seen this happen where somebody doesn't know any better and it's almost like they're picking the first offer and not running a playbook uh, to maximize that, uh, the, the end result. So are you getting tired of having people through your property? on a Sunday morning and you just want to sign off because you've got one full price offer or one that's 10,000 over, I've seen like we could have done that, but we've encouraged the seller to stick out the plan, let us go to work on the phones, let us run a playbook, and literally it made them an extra 20 or $30,000 just because they took our advice. And we knew that we could do that, where if you were doing it on your own, you may or may not understand this market in a way that we do, and you may not even know that that's an option. So you're yeah. just like, oh, thanks, thanks for the offer, signed. Yeah, yeah. Some it's people totally are different. super excited that they just got mm -hmm. an offer in. Like I said, maybe full price, maybe a little above. Oh my God, we just killed it, we won, but didn't know what they could have had. Right. So huge difference between the two things. In fact, like in a market where if it's really fast and there are going to be guaranteed multiple offers, the pricing is good, the marketing is good, you should in fact be hiring the person that runs a playbook on negotiation. That would be my question if I were interviewing real estate agents. One thing that happens a lot that is a mistake, but you don't know it's a mistake going into it, you think you're doing a great thing for yourself, is when you hire somebody that's gonna like give you a massive discount in listing the house because something's gotta give. And usually it's the marketing and the exposure and everything goes hand in hand, but when you do end up selling and you sold for less because somebody gave you a 1% discount or whatever, you feel like you won because you saved money, but you didn't know what you could have had. And it makes a massive difference on all of these things together. Uh, so that's a big mistake. I, I see people chasing a 1% discount to lose maybe four or 5% an actual profit on the sale. So the discount is the first mistake that leads to the mistake of not having a marketing <laughs> plan, not having a realtor that knows how to negotiate or cares to bother. Yeah. So the discount is like the cascading first domino of, of mistakes. In the absence of value, people are always gonna chase the best deal. So the best deal is how much is it gonna cost me? And so if you're telling me that you will discount and I will save 2%, not knowing anything else, I'm gonna think that's a good deal for me, right? Right, you're gonna save $6,000 on, yeah. on a $300,000 house. However, if you had a great realtor, you could have made another 15. Or 20 or 30. Yeah. yeah. See it happen all the time. So one mistake, it's not as common, I don't think, because most people understand there's a little bit of seasonality to the business. A lot of people list their homes in the summer, not so much in the winter, kids are getting out of school, holidays in the winter, things that are happening that make sense. But there's also, within the quarter, within the month, within the week, there's some timing things that happen that we know about, that we pay attention to, that I don't think necessarily if you knew how market flow worked and what kind of activity we get, let's say at an open house on Super Bowl Sunday, it's going to be a problem and you're not yep. going to get the same results as you would the following weekend. So exactly. we think about all that stuff and make sure that the house is listed at the right time. Yeah, it's a common misconception. People think because there's less activity, say in December, that they should never list their house. And I can tell you in some cases, that's the best time. Right. But you have to be really in tune with the market to know if that's true or not true. So, and, and timing could be the time of the week too. Because I can argue with you all day long. Not very many people are looking at homes on Monday, Tuesday compared to Saturday and Sunday. And so if you want to expose your property and list it on a Monday, you may not get a weekend of good activity because you may get an offer, one offer on Thursday. That you have to respond that to. you have to respond to, yeah. And so timing is critical, whether it's the time of the year or just like exactly when you decide to launch the property specifically. This is a huge mistake, you guys. People will list their house, but they're not done with the prep. So they're yes. super close, they have a checklist, and they're 85% through it, and maybe they're feeling some anxiety about Or they already booked their Airbnb and they want to yeah. be gone that weekend, so it's like all this pressure comes to a head at the, yep. at the very end, and they're yes. just like, screw it, we're gonna do it anyways. If the house is 85% ready, and the plan is to list the house on Thursday, 
and it's only gonna be 85% ready for showings, my recommendation is wait until the next week, right? Get the house completely ready for the showings. You have one shot at this. And I see people make that mistake all the time. They'll just force the issue. They'll take pictures before it's ready for pictures and they'll list the house before it's ready to be on the market and people see Unless it. Unless the next weekend is like the 4th of July. Yeah. And then we have to have a conversation yeah. about timing again. Then you go really like, fast. Like, which way are we going? <laughs> which, what's the worst of the thing? So timing is just, yeah, it's something you have to definitely negotiate around. Yep, I've seen it make a difference in thousands of dollars. And so, again, if you're wanting to do this in the way that's most optimal, you have to be thinking of all these details. So I've seen this happen so many times where we're getting ready to list a house and then somebody's like, oh, wait, we need to wait because my friend wants to maybe put an offer in. Mm -hmm. And then we're just waiting for this person, right? We've come up with the marketing strategy. We've timed out the timing. We've done all the things that we know is going to maximize their highest and best value. And then some person that may or may not even be qualified to buy this house and that's the other piece is a do they want it and b are they qualified to buy it and c are they really going to follow through and do it so my suggestion always is you just don't wait for one person i always talk to my clients about this and say you know that's one person that may come and buy your home and they're welcome to come and look at it and as soon they, as we have it available and as are soon they going to are they going to pay the highest price Right. If you ever want to have a conversation, if you want to list your house on your own, uh, get in touch with us. We'll walk you through exactly what to do. We'll give you playbooks and tools that will help you out. Of course, if you do want to hire a good realtor, we know a couple. <laughs> we run a team of excellent realtors here at the Aaron Thomas Home Team. Check out our channel for any other information. There's so much on there to look at as far as real estate content goes. And our contact information is in the description below.